What's happening, folks? Welcome to the John Lovell Show. Due to popular demand, and it's been long overdue, I brought my wife on board. So here is Becca. Howdy, guys. Welcome. We filmed a lot in the past, Mm -hmm. but we're way overdue. Yep for uh, having you on. So we're going to hit you with all kinds of questions. Most Good. of them come from these guys out there. And so they range all the gamut of topics. But mm-hmm. I think people will glean a lot from your perspective. you got a lot of good stuff to say. Sure. All right. Sound Let's good? do it. So you'll look at that camera now and you'll be like, welcome to the John Lovell Show. Welcome to the John Lovell Show. She nailed it. Today it's the Rebecca Lovell Show. It's not. Well. It's it not. Is. It is. Today. Do the thing. Title Today, package. Today, Rebecca Lovell Show. Welcome. <laughs> Shameless plug, guys. We have a new t-shirt. This is the mobile safe space. Lefties will cry for a safe space. They think that's actually a thing. Like you could draw a circle on the earth, stand in it, and now because you've designated this piece of earth a safe space, no one can harm you, no insults, nobody. It's a safe space. That doesn't actually exist. However, if you're a concealed carrier and you roll with us, well, you can be a mobile safe space. You notice there's a trace going through the word mobile and the, the E is formed by a bullet. And that's because if you're a concealed carrier, you are a mobile safe space. Everywhere you go, you've made it safer because you are there. And so if you're one of us, represent Warrior Poet Society, be mobile safe spaces, rush the door, visit our website and make sure you get you and your clan, your friends, these shirts as well. So appreciate that. And now back to things. Yeah. All right, so you have not been in the studio in like a, a very, year. That's a long I don't know. time. I think the last show I did was in August. Well, tell all these folks sure. what you've been doing, and I'd like to know as well. I, <laughs> what what do you me. do with your life? What do I do? Uh, well, we've had just a really busy summer. We finished uh, the homeschool conference circuit which was five cities across the country, and that was really fun. From what I understand, you have a various number of offspring, and you're in charge of yep. educating said offspring as yep. well. And two so. sons. So we start homeschool again in a few weeks, and this will be our ninth year. I can't believe it. Year nine. Fantastic. So, crazy. Good Did times. you just look at me like I was kind of old? <laughs> I look at you. I'm like, what is? Because you're older, we have what to is keep holding that straight, this, everyone. What, what is, is holding this woman together? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Just Grace. A, a bag of old bones. <laughs> there we go. With skin, just. Yep, you're stretched. digging that hole, babe. It is deep. I don't care. You mm-hmm. have to. The okay. cameras will keep you sweet. You can't. You can't light into me. Ben and Ryan are nervous for you right show. now. My face is red. <laughs> I'm sitting over here dying. Yeah. Okay. So today, everybody out there sent us a bunch of questions. So it ranges a whole bunch of different topics and some serious stuff we're going to get into. How has your views on the roles of husband and wives changed over time? I'd say I've always had a really traditional view of marriage. Um, And I was just saying last night, I think I was spared, like the Lord really protected me as a young college student. I went to a women's university my first year, uh, majored in dance, but it was, wow, just feministic to the max. And I think... So all girls college, yeah, <laughs> which meant you're going to these classes and it's a bunch of female instructors that all secretly hate men or yes. overtly hate men. Yes. And there were things I was told and I heard, I was like, oh, that's not right. And it kind of just bounced off and went in one ear and out the what, other. What's an example of that? Um, just in my literature class, like we would end up reading all of these stories that framed men in a bad light and yeah. I just wasn't buying it. And thank goodness, I don't, you know, just the Lord's grace protected me from that, but I could have come out very differently. Yeah. It's um, just all Flannery O'Connor. Oh, so. Flannery. I hate <laughs> Flannery O'Connor. What's wrong with Flannery Collar? O'Connor, one of the because greatest. Because she is not the greatest. American writer. I would so argue. I mean, her stories, like, suddenly this family is just gored by a bull on the highway. Classic. Or, or, or they're just murdered on the highway. It's something just, like, so devastating and needlessly violent. And I'm like, how is she? What? I don't yeah. get it. Um, but anyway, the goal at that university always felt like, okay, I'm going to be like this um, really accomplished career woman, which may be okay for a season or what you're called to, but it was just never for me. I, and I remember uh, telling my professors at the end of that first year, I was transferring out and um, they were kind of like, well, well, 
No, I was asking them, you know, um, I want to get married and have a family one day. And they're, I'm like, what else is there to do besides that? And I meant that like in lifting marriage and family high. And they were kind of stumbling, like what else to fill that with? And I was like, yeah, I'm, um, I'm out. Was like there some, I, I want there was some to dance teacher that get married and have kids. Yeah. Was so offended offended that you would have that because it was like, yeah. you're giving up on dreams. Well, what was that yeah. of, cause you so, like this teacher and you found out later she, she did not like you. Yeah. I, and I didn't mean to offend her with that question of, you know, what else is there to do? Because she had, you know, just gone on to other things in life and chosen not to have the the family and kids. Yeah. But I think the yeah. lonely feminist career track boss babe already lives in a state of perpetual mm-hmm. uh, offense. Mm-hmm. So it's not that you offend them. Yep. It's that they're already walking around uh, offended. Ready to be defensive. Yeah. R- remember my job where I would travel um, doing an uh, auto show with Portia? Yeah. And I was with this group of young women that they were also <laughs> a bit uh, embittered and feministic and just like, avoiding settling down, but still like chasing that career just to the max, like regardless, no matter what, like wanted to um, build that resume and achieve above all else. And it just was never for me. I just wanted to, you know, have the traditional role. And yeah, we knew, we've talked about this before on a video that we wanted to have that traditional role of marriage. So you lead, I follow. That was hard fought, hard one because it's right? almost not done. Some people it's pretend to do it done. in their marriage, but it's not actually. Yeah. It's the uh, only way to make marriage work, and it's God's no. design. It's a perfect design. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of gals would reel under that. It yeah. is very upsetting. The idea that you're supposed to submit right to your husband, mm-hmm. you know, and and he's the leader, and you are not right. Anything to suggest that a fifty fifty compromise in all situations is not the standard, but actually. His vote is higher than yours. Mm-hmm. That that would be anathema. That would, mm-hmm. I mean, nails on a chalkboard to some of these gals coming yeah. up. And I would I would say this: your default setting, though you had more of a traditional view of view, marriage, right. I don't think you would have been there. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right because even if I um, thought I was submitting to it or wanted that kind of leadership over me, how it actually was fleshing out was I was still very. Um, um, what's the word like uh, domineering? Yeah, maybe. So yeah, and we've said this in marriage videos before. Yeah. Like, um, I was more uh, what controlling, yeah. domineering woman, and you were harsh, and so we really yeah, just I was, I was um, hit heads. But following God's plan and design for marriage, like submitting to His way, and us both soft softening our spirits, yeah. working more together, and me um, coming. Uh, beside or behind yeah. has... Yeah. Well, a lot of gals can't even begin to even process that because they really have uh, these uh, kind of boss babe yeah. mentality to yeah. it. That's a really, really big thing now of like... Well, I, was, I would say lonely. you were a conservative feminist. Yeah. And actually, I think that's what most conservative women are. They're actually conservative feminists. Mm-hmm. They have a conservative ideal of how they'd like to see things, but unless they can actually verbally say to their husband, you lead me, I follow... I don't believe it. Uh-huh. And I think that's where most women, even in conservative circles, are. Yeah, and if you, if you branch out to the Christian circles, some women will know enough to say, no, I'm supposed to submit to my husband and he's the head. But then when rubber meets the road, they nag, they use right. all kinds of devices so they're always actually steering the relationship. Even if it's subconscious, let yeah, me say. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think You don't realize and you don't intend yeah. to do that. Well, yes. I, So how did you break from being just a conservative feminist to, to uh, I don't know what the, the title would be for yeah, you. Yeah, sure. But Interesting. I've heard Becca describe herself multiple times in the past as a recovering feminist. Becca, what is a recovering feminist? Um, it's someone who realizes that my ultimate uh, plan and goals and uh, agenda isn't necessarily best. Maybe just because, oh, I feel like, well, I've earned this or I've worked hard or I'm well-educated, I should lead No, again, I keep saying it's God's perfect design and plan for marriage. What we find in the Bible is the only way it's going to work. Where the man leads, the woman follows, um, and we are more of a 
support role. Now it can be a heavy support. And I heard this Italian phrase, like the woman is still the neck, so she can turn the head. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> we don't like that. Cause, cause that's, that's, that's still <laughs> but controlling, it's, but the it's head. not a manipulative way. Like we've said many times, um, I, I would say yeah. the man is the head and the woman's the heart. There we go. Uh, and, the heart. and so it, it's not like you can live without either the, so the, in the marriage, the two, one, yep. uh, two becomes one. Yep. You're both absolutely integral and equal roles, sure. but it's very, very different. It is different. But Becca, go back to the neck. Why did you lead with that though? You, you don't like it, but you used it. What, what is it about that that you like so much? Yeah. <laughs> well, just meaning that uh, it's not like we don't have any influence. I mean, many yeah. times you ask my opinion, you ask my advice, uh, but you're going to make the ultimate decision on yeah. certain things, right? And I respect that and follow you and right. don't try to lead you from the front or control or manipulate so yeah, it's still an influence. It's very important. Yeah. And we've worked hard over the years with date nights and better in communication that it's a friendship. That's so great. I yeah. never feel run over. I never feel unheard. Right. At my worst moments, I do run over right. you and so I have we're to not perfect. So and, I, I can absolutely, yeah. when I get frustrated or I'm stressed out or you're driving me crazy or something. and I'd never do that. Yes, you would. <laughs> you and I would too. So yeah, and we so, don't do um, it perfectly. I, in, at my but... worst, uh, I, I certainly do run over you and have to repent, repent for that. Right. Uh, well, uh, that's not why I've been given a mantle of authority. I'm supposed to cherish and exalt you, and that's what I, what I aim to do. And a lot of times, when uh, you have uh, your opinion, we'll just go with your opinion mm -hmm. uh, on, on massive amounts, especially when it comes to you know Home inside family, inside yeah. the walls of our mm -hmm. house. That's my kingdom. And then you have kind of a kingdom, yeah. Yeah, but and I'm everything outside together, the house, yeah. and it's not clean cut mm -hmm. like that. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm not a... It's just typically I defer to your uh, ideas and, and preferences and wants and desires because I want what, you know, I, I really like you to flourish and be yeah. happy, and I don't care what stools we get for, you know, to go on the deck. I don't care. You right. do. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I have a few thoughts, but uh, really, I just want you to be super uh, psyched and happy. And yep. You can't get the four hundred dollar ones. You can get the, you know, the that kind of the thing. two the two hundred eighty dollar ones. And we're still we're still learning. Like we've still got a long way to go. So we're about to celebrate eighteen years of marriage. <laughs> um, but it was those first hard years that yeah. were like, oh my gosh, we've got to change. And That's I feel good. like the Lord just softened our hearts. Yeah. But um, I do want to say the marriages. There's just a handful that I look up to and admire the most are a good partnership where the man is leading and the woman is happily and um, contentedly following. Yeah. Those are the marriages I want to yeah. be like and I look up to. I like that. Yeah. So uh, feminism, you know, the, the classic claim of feminism is we just want equal rights. You know, men mm -hmm. and women are equal. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if, if that was a prima facie definition, then that, that would be, that'd be great. But culturally, it's shifted, and so that's not what's meant by feminism. They won't say it out loud, but but it's really it's an independent woman who is got the full gamuts of rights. All the opportunities are there mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, uh, I think there is a tacit: uh, I am the leader. Alpha and will be told by no one mm -hmm. what to do. Mm -hmm. And so culturally, that's true, though they would never define themselves that way. Sure. That's become really what feminism is in its most toxic form, which is, yeah. is in its present form. And it, it is a dominate all and be dominated by no one. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have mentioned, you know, because you were a bit of a steamroller in all of your relationships until oh yeah, until me. Wore the pants. And yeah. you were really on a career track. Uh -huh. And then you even did some of that early in our marriage, and you were surrounded by all these boss babes. You, yep. you would you would describe them as beautiful women who yep. were smart, and you were oh, yeah. left and right with them, and they were on their trajectory, and they were doing that whole boss babe thing. And so there was a departure from you and that crowd. What would you say to those gals? And what was having the benefit of being able to look back on them 10, 15 years now, what was the result of their ladder climbing uh, you know, Shira, boss babe, feministic mm -hmm. charge. Mm -hmm. So um, I would, I was starting to see some of them already just being very lonely because they were choosing not to, um, you know, seek out a godly husband or partner. And um, 
they were just looking for career only to fulfill them. And that was always going to be a dead end because again, I think God's design, um, even though singleness can be a blessing and a gift, but I think you should look for a spouse. Um, and I think God's design for marriage and kids is such a blessing and that no career could, um, trump that. So if you have the option to pursue a family, you should. Yeah. Not just career, not career only. Well, yeah. I could counter with your. They were they were looking for provision. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they weren't looking for a career. They're looking to provide their daily needs. So mm-hmm. why is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's just when women say, "I have no need for a man ever." Like a man, it, it's just like the Sex in the City mentality, the a la carte thing, um, where I will just scoop a man up when I need him, discard him when I'm done. It's a very toxic thing. Or just have a good date for a wedding when I need one. It's the women who are purposefully avoiding um, being Mm. committed to someone for their life. That's very different than, man, I looked and God never blessed me with a spouse. That's very different. Mm. Very different. Or I need to work because I need income. Very different. So ironically, on X this morning, I saw one of the writers of the Sex in the City. We'll put it up on screen here. What she said, uh, but she had regretted uh, career tracking herself and wished she had just had family because now, you know, she's in her 50s or or whatever. She's looking back and she says she feels truly alone. And and so, uh, so many women yeah. in the feministic vein the feministic are sold such goals. a lie yep. that career is, you don't want to work for your husband and your kids because right. that's not fulfilling. You want to work for <laughs> another man, a, another right. man at a nine to right. five yeah. and that's fulfilling. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you know, so, so you don't establish this deep, uh, meaningful marriage right. and you don't have kids and then you don't have grandkids and uh, some There's of these no gals yeah. that you worked with. Yeah. Early uh, as before we had kids and you were still doing some career stuff because you were working earlier in our marriage, you saw them hit their thirties and then they were kind of like, oh no, their yeah. biological. You feel clocks. the panic. Yeah, yeah. What and happened? People there? freeze their eggs, or I mean, just one newsworthy thing: Cameron Diaz is like fifty-two and is having kids now, so she put it off for a very long time. Wow. Fifty-two to start your family. Wow. Um, so yeah. And that, that strikes me as, as families, like the last resort, the final thing, rather than like the initial goal for, for what you should be aiming towards. Mm -hmm. And maybe it comes down to, uh, the feminism is kind of a demanding, like what you're owed, what you deserve, what you feel worthy of. And then committing to God's design for a family is more, okay, I'm ready to serve. I have a servant's heart. I want to serve and support my husband, and I want to serve children. Who, For those first few years, it is pure servanthood, right, for little kids. Um, So, yeah, those two things clash. That's good. I think feminism is power. I mean, if I was if I was a boss, babe, it's it's to me, it's about power. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to no. give up power. Mm-hmm. I think you hit the nail right it's on true. the head. It's, it's all about power. Mm-hmm. I don't need a man. I'm a leader. No one tells me what to do. Not only do you have, it's really not about equal rights. They got equal rights right. ages ago. There's any opportunity a man, a woman has to. They like to continue to have victim status, so they seek out the wage gap or something else like that, which has been obliterated by just plain logic and statistics uh, as well. Yeah, women, are, women you, are outperforming men in, in many every places metric right That's now. right. And so, they make up the majority of students in universities now, which, which is, is women. Which mm-hmm. to me is really toxic because and if I'm a woman and I have to work and I'm making more money than my husband, mm-hmm. what do I care what he says? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what do you say to um, you know a, a couple of their dual income and... Maybe even she's the breadwinner. Is that okay? I think so. If it if it has to be uh, done for a season and a time, but um, there was a time when uh, Warrior Poet Society was just starting, and I would work from home yeah. so I could still be able to stay home with the kids. But uh, yeah, there were sacrifices yeah. in we that had to... season. I'd make another pot of coffee at five o'clock and stay up into the night. Yeah. Doing my uh, PR work. Thank you. So when Thank you, you for that. There's times when you have to do that, and yeah. and you should. But uh, did you also, think lesser of John as leader when you had to take that role? Oh, absolutely not. No, because I knew we were doing everything we could, and it's. I think it's those lean times yeah. that even knit you closer as a couple when you go through hardships yeah. together. I'm grateful for it. Thank you, babe. We were yeah. we were super broke. 
We yeah. had, we were plenty in debt as well, mm-hmm. even credit card debt. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm credit card debt is real bad. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Uh, and I have a finance degree here. It's not like I didn't know how to budget yeah. and how, how to run my household. I just didn't bring in enough versus the the cost of a couple kids. And then to couple that, we had a real big conviction that we wanted to homeschool. Mm-hmm. And uh, we couldn't afford to at first. We couldn't. Yeah, and so, so we, we, moved, to... we moved out of our house. And we moved into a little apartment, Apartment apartments that were all stacked on each other. Yeah. So we did that for a few years. Had you guys already ordered your philosophy of marriage before this happened? Like you said, you guys came out the gate, not necessarily. Yeah. You're more conservative feminist, but so had you guys ironed that out before that? Yeah. We were married maybe four or five years by then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we had definitely been, you know, um, growing a lot as individuals as well. Cause what happens is you, you may think that you are, uh, a selfless person, and then you get married and you find out whoever you are, I don't care who you are. You think you're selfless, yeah, yeah, yeah. get married. <laughs> and if you're actually playing ball in a, in a, a right way, if, 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 if in good faith, you know, if like you'll find out you're actually hopelessly selfish, a marriage will reveal that you're selfish. Uh, that's Absolutely. a good thing. Because Brecca, you're saying that like, you know, your, your college story, it makes me feel like your trajectory yeah. was, 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 was the right one. Could have been wildly but different. But then you go ahead and say that when you get married, though, you realize you weren't there. That's right. right. Yeah. You know, And neither right. one of us were. And, and so I had plenty of data su- to suggest that I was a selfless man going into my marriage. I, yeah. I could even list numerable stuff and, and it'd be hard for you to argue with me. I looked pretty selfless in many ways. And then I got married, and it was very obvious I, w- I was filled with all kinds of selfishness. And now what happens is if you bring my selfishness meets your selfishness yep. in a marriage outside of the hot and heavy first couple years, you know, or yep. first few months. Months, yeah. For us, it was months. Yeah. Um, before the, the real weight of conflict and yeah. disagreement and selfishness bumps in, marriage becomes an unhappy and unfun thing. Yeah. Now, if you both grow out of that and become selfless— marriage becomes this flourishing, wonderful thing. But yeah. anybody experiencing brokenness in a marriage, most of it has to do with the fact that you are selfish and so is she. And then on top of that, you add communication issues. And so those two things alone can mm-hmm. torpedo a marriage. Mm-hmm. So you have to become more selfless. Mm-hmm. Very hard to do that without Jesus. Very, you become mm-hmm. more selfless. Mm-hmm. And then marriage becomes a really fun thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's out trying to outdo me in acts of service and love, and I'm trying to outdo her, and we're not keeping a record of any of it. It's not right. a barter exchange. Right. But then it becomes this really oh, uh, this really dynamic, loving relationship. Someone really asked, right. who made the first step in that? Gosh, I don't really remember. I, I think we, we just... walked together in that. Yeah. because yeah. I know, it was uh, a long time ago. It was like, like 15 years at least. Um, but yeah, we were just fighting a lot yeah. all the time because, um, we also didn't have a lot of good mentors around us at yeah. the time of marriage and weren't plugged into a strong church. Uh, and so we were kind of just battling it out, like all the wrong things first, right? What not to do. Um, and then I just remember it just gradually getting better because I think we were, desperately just having to submit to God, like, God, this is not working. Like, you're just going to have to change our hearts. And it was just a slow change of heart of, yeah, being more patient, considerate, kind, seeking the other's best interest before your own. That was your prayer. Those were the prayers that you were uttering. Yeah. Yeah. She she was controlling and I was a brute. Yeah. Uh, You know, like when I'd experience friction, I'd, I'd go more like calm, very reasonable, very um, black and white, black and white specific, yeah. and I just basically treat her like a dude yeah. in that interpersonal way. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, you you treat her different. She's not a dude. Yeah. You don't argue with her like that. Is a steamroll or yeah. say that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You know, I'm like yeah. no, no, whoa, easy, bro. <laughs> and you 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 were able you were able to realize that in yourself, John. She made it very obvious I was doing that. Huh. It was undeniable. Yeah, I, I recognized I, I was yeah. that mm-hmm. way. I, absolutely. I didn't feel like it. Certainly not at first. So it took a, a certain amount of. Courage and intro- introspection and conviction that was given to oh, me. Yeah. So, Holy so Spirit, the, right there. So the, the, <laughs> that was even to be apparent because typically you get in a fight and it's always the other person that's in the wrong. Right. And you're clean. And if only they 
could be reasonable. If only they could see things the way they really are, which happens to be the way that you see it, then all this would be cleared up because really this fight, this problem is their fault. Mm -hmm. And that's just such a cop out. It's such a lie. Sometimes you can get every once in a while you'll get in a fight and it's all the other person. It's just bad day, bad, whatever. It's not always 50, 50. Every time we fight, it's equal thing. Like, nope, sometimes Beck and I fight and it is totally on her. She's got a crappy attitude and uh, she's being a brat, <laughs> and she's doing her thing. I'm owning it, and sometimes it's you, and sometimes it's me. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. as yeah. we've but been, we take responsibility for each other. As we've yeah. been married, now it's easy if like I snap at her, and then you know, uh, two minutes later, I come up. I'm like, mm -hmm. I would like to be nice to you. I'm burned out, mm -hmm. and I am prickly. Yeah. So I am sorry. We have all those guardrails in place now does, of burnout. Yeah. Or does your like kids? Do they help you be aware, more aware of how you treat each other? Sure. Once they're old enough that you're modeling marriage in front of them, they're old enough mm. to listen and remember. Yeah, that keeps you on track. You realize they're watching too. and yep. they're listening. Yeah. And so it makes you, once you realize that, you, you do your own little self-assessment. You're like, how am I coming across yeah. here? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want them to treat their mother well with respect and, yeah. and love and affection, but I'm not doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, one day he's going to be a terrible husband because he watched me be a her, terrible husband. Oh, that's a. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and so yeah. Uh, what I I'm doing yeah. in mistreating him, her, her is dooming his future, future marriage. marriage. <laughs> yeah. So we want to set them up for success. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do want to throw this in that uh, one of the scariest baby registries I've ever been sent to buy a baby gift for had the little baby cardboard books on. Um, the book series was called Little Feminist. Oh. And I was terrified, um, especially for the father, because if the father was allowing uh, this mom to register for little feminist baby board books for the unborn daughter. Yeah. Wow. He's got a hard road ahead. Yeah. That's going to be a hard road on yeah. that marriage. Um, since when did feminist books make it onto baby registries? I mean, it's just yeah. our culture is just seeping toxic stuff in as early as possible. Can you be married? Uh, can you have a happily ever after with a feminist wife? I would say no, because we've known so many that it just. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work, guys. Uh, I'd say it that doesn't work. There's one way you can at least, uh, you know, stay married, and that's you submit control to them. Just whatever they think, you go and with the that. Man whatever they want, a shell, they, and just the man a becomes shell a shell. The man, uh, what tragedy on both parts? Because the woman ultimately is tired of leading as well. Mm. So they're both unhappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. She will. She will take the mantle of authority in all ways. Yeah. Uh, he'll turn into a shell, and then she won't respect him or love him anymore. But she's uh, become accustomed to have this live in servant. And so she may keep him around, mm. uh, but I'll probably resent him anyway. And yeah. so, yeah, it's not going to be happily ever after. You may stake out the marriage, you know, for the long term, but it, it's going to be pretty awful. A boss babe feminist is unmarriable, uh, or at least there is no happily ever after that. And, and what's sad is, is a lot of these boss babe feminists, they, they look at all the material stuff of like, look, I got this house. I got this paid off car. I've got this high end career. I'm beautiful. I've got out the outfits. All I need to do is just bring a man into this. And then I would have the whole package and mm -hmm. it's great. And so mm -hmm. what's wrong with me? I've got all this stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. You are so unmarriable. You're so wildly toxic. You don't understand that the only space that you have in your life is in your shadow. Mm -hmm. I mean, a guy wants to sign up to be a, the the servant to a boss babe, or maybe he thinks it would be fun for a little while. Mm -hmm. It won't be fun long term. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, these gals uh, in this power struggle, uh, it, it looks like just a nightmare to be married to. Mm -hmm. Feminists think that by competing men, with men uh, and winning that you'll woo men, uh, and, and you won't. You, you scare <laughs> well, away. The guy then, he is allowed to play video games in the living room while his spouse does does her her job right right but mm -hmm. i did say men not little boys there's a lot of older boys who can shave they're 35 year old men they got their sugar mama that. they play video games they do nothing yeah. and she brings home you know like that's not a man that's a little boy a man uh takes responsibility and care for those around them it's the but a boy doesn't of... a boy's needs are met by someone else a man 
rises up and takes care of the needs of other people. Mm-hmm. And so, no, she married And a, a man boy. needs to rise up to do that, really. Yes. It's yeah. the curse of the fall. It's the mm-hmm. abdication yeah. of, of, of authority yes. and leadership. That yeah. is part of Adam's original sin as well, yeah. I think. Yep. Yep. Let, let's shift gears dramatically. What advice would you give for women who have not had exposure uh, to learn to be comfortable around firearms? How does a woman learn to be confident in her own self-defense and uh, to conceal carry? Yeah, I think starting little by little is great. So when you were first getting me into firearms training, um, we would do just short little intervals. So Mm -hmm. we'd go to a range or we'd shoot outside. Um, And I think personally, if shooting outdoors is an option that is a little more, uh, a little less abrasive than an indoor range at first, if you can manage it. But um, yeah, we would shoot for little intervals and you would make it fun and you just show me a, a few things at a time. And then, okay, I'd process that, learn that maybe a week or two would go by and we'd do it again. Yeah. Also, we would start going through home defense stuff. You'd say, all right, in an hour, I need just about 20 minutes of your time. Can you manage that? And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> no like, one's coming for all us. The things, all the things I'm managing, uh, like, yeah, let me figure this out too, you know? So I was kind of aggravated by it. But you made it into these bite-sized chunks, and you were patient, and you were kind about it. And then you kind of made it fun. Like, you know, you'd... Uh, take pictures or show me like, it's not that hard and you can do this. And I'm like, yeah, look at this. This is fun. Um, And then just developing those skills over time with the firearm. So just practicing, um, getting training before all the cool gear. Right. And you really don't even, um, yeah, need all that. So um, yeah, just making it a bite size, uh, practical ways that you can slowly uh, learn over time. So it's not like suddenly I'm a firearms training expert and I carry, you know, a concealed AR in my pants here and one on my back. Like you don't go from (laughs) zero to hero in one day. (laughs) So hot. (laughs) Um, It's a gradual thing. Um, And so our kids were at an age as well where I felt like, okay, I can start um, carrying. They were maybe four and five. Um, it's just a lot trickier when they're younger than that. It can be done. But when you've got the little toddlers into everything, it's a little more intimidating yeah. to start as well. Yeah. Uh, I remember one specific drill when we were living in South Georgia, yeah. just something real easy for people to do of like we had an Air 15 in the corner. And I wanted a few minutes, four or five minutes of you doing this before I beat feet out of town. I'm like, all right, baby, you're going to pick up this gun. You're going to run over here and you get down and you're just going to point it at the yeah. door and, and uh, doorway and hold and you're going to run the bolt yep. uh, and then put the gun on fire yep. and it's all unloaded and we're all making sure everything's clear. And then you would do that. And then we do it again. I'm like, all right, fantastic. All right. That was smooth. That was clean. What'd you do? What'd you do wrong? What'd you do mm-hmm. right? And we just do that a few times and then like, and then that's it. Yep. And so really short little training things yes. added up to be uh well, we didn't do any. Th- we didn't do a lot of anything in a month, but we did a lot of st- a lot of stuff when it added over like up over like six months, yeah, or over a year, absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. Good. So I felt competent over time um, because you made those little investments, yeah, and that built my confidence. Mm. Uh, let's do another question <laughs> okay. uh, from everybody weighing in on X. Uh, do you prefer the warrior or the poet, and why? Um. <laughs> I mean, truly, I love both and I need both. Um, I, you know, we're attracted to the warrior. We're attracted to the poet as women, but um, it would have only taken only someone like you as a warrior could have conquered the dragon spirit in me. The and then dragon? Wooed it <laughs> the with, the, um, <laughs> with the poet. So, I mean, yeah, maybe you attract a mate with a little bit of a poet, but it's like the brawn and the impressive feats of the warrior, but you keep the spouse so, with the poet. So if I want a good night, is it skinny jeans and a guitar or is it <laughs> body armor and a rifle? Which, I think body armor is very attractive. So if yeah. I do body armor, skinny yep. jeans and a guitar, I mean, is that like hundred per ninety nine percent end zone? What, you know, what's... I like the whole war hero bit. I really like that. So looks like warrior takes the day. <laughs> With my bride, I'll 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 lean into that. Uh, there's this meme I love that, um, or maybe it's just a little a reel where women are like um, uh, looking side eyed at their skinny jeaned, uh, mm. you know, I don't know, 
totally poet only husbands like okay apocalypse can this guy kill and track meat no. and food and like <laughs> they're looking side eyed like what have I done no <laughs> so you need both you need warrior and poet we've been watching all these survival <laughs> yeah. shows yeah. and that guy that yeah. artist guy yeah. 100% of the time does badly yeah. on these survival yeah. shows so you want to be you know what they say in touch with your feelings yeah. but you need to be able to provide you yeah, need to protect. Good. Yeah. Very good. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap up. Uh, and I'm going to kick it over to you. Just a, a final thought. Anything that you would like to tackle uh, for, for these good folks out here watching? So I like a quote by C.S. Lewis that he basically says, homemakers have the ultimate career because it's for that that all other careers exist. So for people to be able to so um, hardworking men at factories or the train station or the office to come home to a happy, healthy home is worth it in every way. And raising kids in a godly legacy that they can look back on their home life and say, I had a good childhood and I respect my parents and I want to raise a family like them. That's what we're striving for ultimately. That's good. Yeah. You're a great wife and a great mother yes. and I honor you for that. Thank you I for love being you. You're amazing. a good daddy and husband. Yeah. Yeah. We're awesome. working, uh, failing forward, aren't we? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah together. You're also really pretty. <laughs> I just noticed something that's close to you. Okay. Um, let's let these guys go. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks uh, for this... stopping by. Stay classy. <laughs> uh, we went really long, had a great uh, conversation. Yeah. So we're not doing our other elements of the John Lovell show that uh, typically is there is our hot topics or a Q and ambush. Cause really this whole episode has been a uh, Q and yeah. ambush. Uh, so guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We're back to business as normal next week and uh, see you later. <laughs>